Alright, we're going to reopen the uh, Charter Commission uh, to continue with the eligibility section or qualification section, whichever term it seems it's written eligibility here. But, uh, um, I've read through both Jason's and uh, Lisa's. Lisa's made the corrections on hers for city and stuff like that and made some grammatical things. So, Jason, do you mind if I let her just read? Okay. Go ahead. Eligible. Eligibility. To be eligible for the office of alderman, a person must be a citizen of the United States of America, a registered voter of the city and a respective ward, and shall have been a resident of the city for at least two years prior to the date of their election. An alderman shall reside and hold their primary residency within the respective ward for at least one year prior to their election and during the entirety of the term to which they were elected. No person shall be elected or appointed to the office of alderman who is in arrears for any unpaid city taxes. Go ahead, Jason. Yeah, I, uh, on the eligibility section, again, I, we had a conversation last meeting about this and some of the ideas that, at least that I felt came up that were supportive um, was the tightening of the residency. Um, I do believe, and obviously we can check to this, that um, it was mentioned to have at least one year in the ward the uh, individual intends on running added to that. And so that wasn't included. That wasn't included as well. So the difference pretty much is, is three, three things. One, uh, you have to be a resident of the city of Raytown for two years. Um, that's the difference between my previous Article 3 eligibility and this one presented to you tonight. Uh, that you have to be a resident in your ward for one year. That was the difference between last meeting and this meeting's Article 3. And then um, a couple uh, commissioners expressed that they wanted to tighten uh, the residency situation. So what I did was I added a couple things here. There's a couple key words uh, that have legal definitions here. Uh, the first one uh, is within the second part of the first sentence. It says, um, obviously, a person must be a citizen of the United States, which comes down to several things, but then a registered voter of the city. So a registered voter is one key point there uh, concerning eligibility because there's all sorts of uh, residency requirements with such. Uh, in addition, there's the resident of the city uh, for one and then one year, uh, or at least residency for two years. Uh, and uh, let's see here. And then I put added the word on the next sentence: an alderman shall reside and establish primary residency within the respective ward for at least one year. Now, the primary residency word uh, that was kind of borrowed. Um, and it has to do, honestly, I'll bring up the example of the state of Florida where um, there's people that try to you know, evade certain types of taxes because Florida's tax laws are more relaxed. Uh, to give an example, uh, the CEO of Cerner benefits from such, but the idea is that, you know, he, he, he has to spend a majority of his time within Florida as compared to Missouri. If he spends the majority of his time in Missouri, he has to pay taxes. Uh, Missouri state taxes. So the primary residency is, is alluding to the fact that this must be the individual's primary residence. Uh, if they had a couple homes, you know, and say they, you know, only physically lived in the home in Raytown for two months out of the year, well, that's not your primary residency. So that's what the that word uh, implies, and I wanted to add that. Now, obviously, later on when we decide to get a lawyer to look through this document, they can provide additional information and insight to that. But that was uh, the conclusion upon my own uh, investigation. And then finally, um, Jan, uh, Janet Ms. Emerson and uh, Ms. Van Busker brought the idea about uh, no unpaid city taxes during the entire term. And so the last sentence, it says, in addition, and I added this, it says, nor shall any person be elected or appointed to the office of alderman uh, who obviously has, has unpaid city taxes. Um, that's not only for election, but also added there during the entirety of their elected or appointed term. Um, according to the MML document right now, it just says at the time of uh, election.
but during the entirety of the term, uh, I felt like, and again, if I'm wrong, folks, please do let me know, but I felt like the will of the commission uh, was behind those three points that I made. Uh, so that's pretty much the, the thought and logic behind these changes, and uh, I will yield to the floor. Go ahead, Charlotte. Um, I just have a question on how are you going to know if that's their primary residence, that is their primary home, and what the process will be, because yes, when you, I think it's your only signing the paper that you're not in arrears when you're going for an election cycle. So is that going to be the qualification, um, elected or appointed? And you've also got appointed in there, and usually it's only elected. <coughs> for the arrears and these unpaid city taxes. So my concern is just how are you going to be able to find out that information? And if it's for the duration of their term, is there going to be like monthly checks or something? I, I, I think I, I may be able to answer that question. Um, I think with, for sure, the unpaid city taxes, the, the Jackson County Election Board, to my knowledge, um, is going to be the one that falls through on that. And if somebody has more information about that, please interject. But the second part is the primary residency. Um, again, I imagine the Jackson County Election Board um, is going to try to, to see if these folks are, are compliant with such when these folks file. But um, if anyone has any additional information, um, please, please respond. Susan, did you have time? Yeah, I do. Thanks for your sentence.
records that they can check to see if you paid your sewer license fee, and if you got a business, if you paid your occupation license and stuff like that. Uh, county records are public. You can look up on that computer right now in this room and uh, tell if they paid their taxes. Since aldermen are elected to a four-year term, it's important that it does not be every fourth year that they have to qualify. <coughs> you can make it qualify every every year on December 31st when the tax year changes. And that's easy enough to find out. As far as the board policing itself, forget it. It won't. I've seen it go both ways. I've seen them uh, literally run people off the board. I've seen them turn their head the other way when, when things are being done that aren't right. And uh, I think you need to put it into the document, into your charter document, very clearly that if you cross this line, you are gone. If you don't live where you're supposed to be living in the ward that they represent, you leave. If you do not pay your taxes, you are gone. In fact, what you are doing, you're removing yourself from the ward. Now, who is the authority to determine where they live? That can become a matter if somebody wants to go fight it uh, for the courts eventually. But um, if you're leaving it up to the board to police themselves, I, I'm just telling you it's not a good idea. There's, there's too much. I, 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 I'm not trying to throw aspirations against anybody that's on the board right now, but I've seen different boards where cronyism protected people who did not live within the city, or most of the time they represented people on the city council. And the votes were locked in solid, and they weren't going to budge. So I, I think it's important that we put build these safeguards into the charter so that it becomes not a question of well we'll let, let, the, let the board go ahead and do it because sometimes it just doesn't happen well and i don't think it's up to the charter commission to do the policing either we're, we're not supposed to put the information in. we're just saying we're not yeah we're just right. saying the rules go ahead jim uh, first of all i i think i agree with the intent um i, I would as stated, though, when it says that you have to have your tax paid at the time um, that you're elected, I think you maybe need to add and serve. Because after you're elected, if you're, you're, if you're um, tax paid at the time you're elected and during the four time, the, the, the year, the next four years, um, you're serving. And so any time during that service that your taxes go unpaid, I think that's the intent, then you're automatically off the board. That what I think both of you are in agreement with that. Is that true? Yeah. That, um, Jim, I'm sorry. I'm trying to get some clarification because the last sentence says, it says, "Yeah, in addition, no person shall be elected or appointed to the office of alderman um, who is in arrears for any unpaid city taxes during the entirety of their elected or appointed terms." So, if you wanted to add what now again? Um, I guess I would say that they serve, I guess, because it cleared it, because it, it cleared it. It's, it's just a small point. But, but here's, here's where I'm going with this, okay? The, uh, there, there are questions that I think should be spelled out. For example, going back to sewer, we, I already refer to the sewer taxes. Now, the financiers will tell you that they're a user fee. And uh, uh, so the question is, and this is what could happen. Okay, so let's say that, and, and the question is, when are you in arrears? Um, normally, if I don't pay my utility bill, I'm going to be charged immediately as I go over that certain date. And I think I hear Greg saying that too. Um, you go over a certain date, you're off the board immediately. But nobody knows that, so then you go back and say, well, so you actually weren't on the board when you voted on that. And so it was a close vote of seven, I mean, a, a six to five, uh, so to speak, then. You go back and say, well, he really wasn't on the board at that time because he's off. And you have to have a call for an election immediately because someone's been kicked off the board because they didn't pay their taxes on the day due. And then it would be the same would be true if you buy a car. You have to pay your sales tax by a certain date that the city you live in. So if you miss it that by a date, I think it's 30 days after you have to your sales tax is paid, you're off the board. Um, it becomes a little more complicated when you do that. That's, I, I think you need to spell out there, you can say, if you're one day late, you're off the board. 
I think there's probably more than that. Yeah, I was getting ready to ask that. I didn't know if you wanted to have some kind of maybe like a timeline in there, or something to that effect, you know, um, if, if, you know, an individual is delinquent within, you know, three months uh, of the tax they'll do, you know, then they're removed, something to that effect. Is that what you're, I guess, requesting? Yeah, I think it needs to be spelled out. Like, whether it's one day or if it's a grace period, it just needs to be said. Okay. That's all. to 
my passion. I don't feel that they should be given grace for their failure to comply with the, the laws of the city, or if we want to take it further, the county, city, state, or federal government for that matter. Um, if my taxes are in arrears, I'm going to pay some kind of penalty, more than likely, whether or not I'm an elected politician representative of the city or the people of the city. And I think that we should uh, consider making this a pretty, uh, it's a firm requirement. It, it only makes sense. Thank you. See you in the I was um, thinking about what Jim said about the city and taxes and all, but this charter is being written for the city of Raytown. I don't think all the way through we need to clarify that it is the city of Raytown because that's what it says right at first. So is it not state taxes? Well, it's only Raytown city taxes, so county taxes, state taxes don't count. Well, yeah. City taxes are collected by the county, so in a way, property taxes are county. Well, again, I'm going to also look at this another way. You're saying no person shall be elected or appointed. Well, they can't even be elected or appointed if they're not qualified. And the first process is being qualified by having that checked out or served. Or served, exactly. So, Right, they can serve and not be paid and be delinquent in taxes. Right, but they can't be elected. Yeah, they can't go through the election process or, the, or maybe even the appointment process if they got to pay no, the taxes. I think it's, it's, it's clear that everybody's in agreement that we want to do something along these lines. And do you want to build in a grace period for somebody to make a mistake, you know, and say, okay, you've got 30 days to correct it or something like that? That's you know, that's understandable, but uh, I think it's real clear that I haven't heard anybody speak against the idea that if you're an elected official in Raytown, you are going to pay your taxes, you are going to be a model citizen. And I think that that's the statement that we want to make. Good question, Ken, is how we do that. I, I, I just think we need to think care of another thing that I can decide on. So this would even include, for example, if you got out to someone in have their a, a, a dog tag. If their, if their dog license were expired, be on the board. It's a city tax. Everything is, is a city tax, yeah. yeah. I mean, if you're, you're really trickling down, you know, slide a little there, you know. Um, same would be true if they didn't get a license. <laughs> well, Mary Jane, go ahead. I have to laugh because when Bill filed the first time, he didn't have tags for a dog. Boy, that's the first place I went to bed. I was <laughs> tags under my husband's orders. But anyway, uh, you know, as far as the grace period, if I'm behind in my sewer, they're not going to give me three months. Oh, no. They want the money now. And uh, so, you know, I, I'm kind of hard nosed about it, I guess. Well, you don't get your bill on the last day it's due, most normally. So you do have a period there that they're giving you grace for it. You just, uh, I can agree with that. Um, unappointed, so we're talking about the Board of Aldermen, and somebody for whatever reason is gone, and we have to put a new one to appoint in. They are appointed, they fill out information, but as I recall, I don't think that they go through any kind of, are you, you know, sign off that you're up to date in your taxes and stuff. Nor do they pay the, you know, they don't go through that election process. So as appointed, they wouldn't um, have that. My understanding is qualified. Yeah, well, my understanding is different. Yes, thanks. Sorry. Um, my only concern is that if somebody was in an automobile accident and they were in the hospital and could not. There was no way they could, you know, functionally pay their thing. We should at least give, say, 30 days, at least, because you don't know what unforeseen circumstance might happen as far as an accident or something like that. So, or or you will just lost the mail. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think 
on that point, if something unfortunate happens, I'm like, oh, they're not on the board anyway <laughs> at that point in terms of voting. But uh, I, I see your point. I, you know, I, I guess what I'm looking at here is this. I want to know what the will of this commission is because this can obviously be rewritten. You know, I, I do think there needs to be something in there about unpaid taxes like Greg mentioned earlier because I think that everyone here kind of has that same mentality. Um, so I, I think maybe what we need to do is uh, kind of clarify it a little bit. I mean, if you guys want to keep city taxes that word in there, that's that's fine. Um, so I guess to me the debate is, is there a grace period or not? I guess that's what the discussion is right now. And I think the discussion is just on this last sentence, the whole rest of them. Uh, eligibility <clears throat> seems to be okay. I just want to make that point. I mean, it seems like the only thing we're discussing is this deal with taxes. So please go ahead. I chopped out a few words for what you had just discussed about um, you can't be an alderman anyway. If, so what I chopped it down to is no person sh shall serve as alderman who is in arrears for any unpaid city taxes during the entirety of their term. And I assume you can add a um, grace period for that. If that sounds good. Go to Jason. Um, Come on, your section on, on yours. Oh. It says, no person shall be elected or appointed to the office of alderman who is in arrears for any unpaid city taxes, and that's it. On mine, it says, in addition, nor shall any person be elected or appointed to the office of alderman who is in arrears for any unpaid city taxes during the entirety of their elected or appointed term. So I think the conversation was, and the reason I added that was because I think the conversation was last time, it was just who was in arrears for unpaid city taxes, and the conversation got brought up that there should be that way every year they're on the the board. So that's why I added that little additional piece. No, that, that's fine. I just want to clarify. I, sorry, that's why I was trying to clarify. So how, how uh, it should be exactly the same way for now? Okay. Uh, uh, but we can, I can just say entirety of their term since you already pointed out whether they're elected or appointed. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Please reread your last sentence in so that maybe we can move on. Yes. Oh. Um, and I had cut out the, the beginning, if, that, if that's okay. Just no person shall serve as alderman who is in arrears for any unpaid city taxes during the enti entirety of their term. Is that correct? Is that unpaid city taxes? Yes. Yes, I copy it. Any unpaid city Go ahead. I, I think we need to include county and, and federal taxes in there. I mean, if they're going to be an example, I think they need to be an example all the way through. I agree with her. I, I don't see that. I mean, well, you're still going to get, there's always going to be a due date, like you said. You get the bill and you say it's due 30 days from now. Sure. Well, but how are you going to check that? Exactly. Who we can't. Federal, you know, county, I understand you go online, da 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 da. But federal, how are you going to get a database to check that? Get an extension. Well, yeah, you can get an extension. And that's a legal extension, so you're not in arrears, you're in a legal extension. You've got different deadlines for different people. And you don't really know that on the federal. The county one, you can, since the city does collect the property tax, it's in the county, and therefore you're covered on that end. Okay, well then just put city or and, and county. Well, even just by saying city, you, you, you catch that. Because the only way you pay county is by pay city is through the county. Through the county, that's true. Yeah. Okay. And if they don't pay their federal, it'll catch up. Oh, yeah. What about, what about state of Missouri taxes? What about state of Missouri taxes? Um, <coughs> yeah, I don't think you can check that. You can get a section on this one, well, that's right. So, so, yeah, I think, yeah, city covers county. The word city covers county, I think, I think we'll, I mean, I'm personally fine with that if city covers county. Um, the, yes, Jim. I just think that <clears throat> before we act, before the final day at the end of the summer or whatever it may be that we, I'd like to do some things. So that was my question. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I used the market to get to this public business. And if you're on vacation for, say, a month and you are out of the country, yeah. Yeah. Sure. If it is a tax, it doesn't apply to the So, Jim, 
my my understanding is that you're you're concerned about the, the smaller things that can happen, right? And that we should limit it possibly to just the city taxes. Your personal the regular property. city taxes. Regular city taxes. Okay. Regular city taxes. Okay. Okay. Let's put regular city taxes. Well, that, that's what it says. It says any unpaid city taxes. I mean, I, I see the I see the point this Ray is bringing up. I. You know, I'm just going to state this. I'm personally tired of, you know, when you look at situations, you read the news, and this happens even in Raytown, and I'm not saying the Board of Aldermen, but other elected bodies, where, you know, there's rules and laws that are violated by elected officials, and there's no consequences. You can serve and be elected in positions and not pay your property taxes. You know, I, I think we have rules and laws for a reason, and I know it may sound a little cutthroat, but look, you know, I, I think I'm kind of tired of these politicians and people kind of getting away with things that are, are that are written down in their laws, you know. And I'm not saying this to be punitive, but I'm saying it because I think there needs to have there needs to be that value there. So you know, again, I uh, I think city taxes is an appropriate term. I, I think it's you know I, I think logically that that it's you know you know that, that it's something is is completely applicable and something is be appropriate. So you're saying unpaid city taxes, can we just strike the word any? I mean if city taxes and fire personal property and those major taxes. So here's the question then. So what does just in arrears for unpaid city taxes? Yeah. I mean so like the difference between any unpaid city taxes versus unpaid city taxes. I mean what I mean I'm just trying to get the clarification on the difference there. I, I don't think it's really Matters to be honest. And that's just at least my perception. Of course, I'm not a lawyer though. Right. So I, I think again, something to consider is we can maybe go with something and maybe have the lawyer kind of later on when you want to say, hey guys, that's what this means, and you may want to consider voting to change that. So that's that's what I think. I think we just need to circle back. Unpaid city taxes, put a question mark by it. Lawyer. A lawyer. Yes. All right. Yes, so is the general consensus then, though, that the entire paragraph for eligibility is consistent with what we're trying to put forward, and that, that this one issue of taxes obviously will be uh, uh, dealt with by an attorney, most likely? So we can move on. Okay. Is there any objection to that? All right. All right. Election terms. Um, I don't see any differences between is there one word? It's just a standard. So, <coughs> okay, say so where, where is that? Uh, Go ahead and read yours. Um, mine's uh, each ward shall have two aldermen on staggered election cycles. Aldermen shall be elected to serve four year, four year terms. I just took out the staggered because it was kind of applied to the first sentence, unless I'm misunderstanding. The term an order of elected alderman position shall keep in continuity with the previous structure and status prior to this charter. Am I, did I misunderstand the use of standard or was it just unnecessary? Thoughts? Great. I don't think anybody has any problems with the definition as, as was read. I do believe that if we are going to discuss term limits, this is where it belongs. And I read through a number of the different cities that have term limits within the metropolitan area and others, and I found one that I think fits well. It's a very good compromise that is used in the city through summer. And um, I've given Lisa a copy of it so that we can consider this for further debate because we are getting near the witching hour. Um, but if I'll read it into the record for, for the record. Um, this is out of Lee Summit City Council's uh, thing. So they say, I'm going to insert more volume as I hope was, this is just for discussion and uh, the spirit of compromise. Election terms and term limitations. Board of Aldermen shall be elected to serve staggered four year terms as provided by section 16.2b, the election of city officials. City council, at each regular municipal election, council members shall be elected to fill the offices of those whose terms expire. There shall be no limit to the number of terms a person may serve as a council, as a uh, 
board member, provided no person shall be eligible or qualified to be elected as a board member no more than two consecutive four-year terms. So what it does, it limits you to two four-year terms, or more time to say eight years. It does allow you to come back and run again after setting off for two years until the next step to turn to come up if you want to run for office again. I think it allows for people to continue in public service. And from my own personal experience, I think it is a plus for someone to step away uh, from being on the elected board because you can <coughs> see things differently. I know I did in a number of situations when I was on the board. Uh, and I, I, I think it allows people to come back. It also allows a situation where new blood can come onto the board too. I don't really want to belabor the arguments on it as the pros and cons, but I would like us all to think about it as we move forward and uh, be considered when we have all the charter commission here at that time. Well, I think uh, we've been discussing this since the last time, and, and I mean, it was brought up at the last meeting about the term limits and so forth when we went through this the first time. So, uh, in, in the process of finishing up this one section of 3.3 or 3.2, um, I would like to get a general consensus from the rest of my commissioners as to how they feel on these on term limits. And uh, we already heard from the uh, uh, general public on in regards to this earlier. Well, we heard from one member. Well, that's, that's true, but it was the one that showed up. So. I, I have a statistic here, which is kind of interesting, a poll that I conducted on my website, which uh, has the statistics where, as Mr. Johnny pointed out, that theoretically 40% would be against it, 60% or 60% would be against term limits. On my poll, it's just the option. So if you're going to take that argument, you there to uh, alienate 60% of voters who would prefer to have term limits. I would also argue that this could be used as a pullout issue, and I'm currently conducting a poll which shows that overwhelmingly people would be inclined to vote on it and probably draw more interest to the Charter Commission's efforts if we had that on so that they could make a decision as a pullout issue. I don't think that we had this discussion uh, term limits that allowed people to come back in at the last commission meeting. And I think that that's correct, but it was opened up enough that I think people at least have had a chance to think about it. I know it's been on the back of my mind ever since you brought it up. But not, not this specifically, because we didn't go into specifics as to how we would operate it. And there may be other ways that people could do it. I know one charter commission member up here with whom I've spoken to privately told me that she would prefer a 12 year period or three terms rather than two. And I'm willing to listen to the arguments. I don't think it's fair to make that decision tonight. I would then again open it up to the rest of the commissioners. Yeah, Mary Jane. Well, I was looking at Greg's poll here, and he had a total of 23 votes. Mm -hmm. Well, how many? How many? Uh, no, what's his total votes? 23. This is the one.
I told Greg that I would call around people that I know voted every election. And the general consensus of those, and granted there were about 62 people because I didn't have that much time to spend on the phone. However, their general consensus is we already have that in place by the next election coming up. It can be voted out. But on the other side of that, if we somewhere down the road in this this process of this charter, we put in recall referendum and initiative, they have that way also. Okay. Mike. Yeah. And the people that I've talked with, both when I was running for election and since then, I've had maybe a couple at most that have said that they would be for term, le term limitations. They, like myself, feel that the voter is the one that's both more apt to decide who should be up here and who should not. Jim? Normally when you have term limitations, it's for everybody. And when you start making phone calls, they just say, do you want to have term limitations for aldermen? Or do you tell, tell them, term limitations for the aldermen, the chief of police, and your judge? It becomes a whole different story. And um, I think that cities that have um, term limitations probably do it when they appoint their chief of police, not elect them. I think in this city, probably, even though I think it might be good to have a pull out item on whether or not we elect or, or appoint a, a, a city uh, marshal, um, I think most people in this city want to elect them. I think they probably want to keep it the way it is. So I think if you can ask the question that way, you want to add term limitations for your chief of police, they would probably say no. Um, I heard Greg point out. Uh, I heard Greg point out before um, a good point about um, what if somebody has more influence or resources than somebody who is completely unknown or poor, for instance. I mean, that's not the way you put it necessarily, but that's the general gist of it. Um, what if they don't think they can beat the other person? The other person continues to run it always wins just because the other person has, you know can't get the vote out enough or something, I don't know, whatever the, the possibility may be, um, should, should other people be given a chance, so to speak. It's, it's not a, a chance as far as things can be voted for, but do they have the name recognition or name power or billboards all around town or whatnot that would sort of give them more of an opportunity to hold office than, for instance, somebody so I, I don't have an opinion per se, it's purely that I'm still trying to decide myself, but it's purely not that it's an indexity for us. I have to agree that uh, check limits do provide for an injection of a new voice within the board of Albany to come from places where it may have no possibility of going up against someone with a super incumbency. I don't think that this is an attack on anyone sitting on the board of government or city council seat will be decided. Uh, it's not a matter of getting rid of someone. It's allowing opportunity and fresh ideas to come forward. Um, I think that it's a healthy thing and I like, I will say that maybe it's prematurely, but I like the idea that uh, after serving X number of terms, one would have to sit on a dance and come back to get the, their position back. Um, I think that there are, as I was campaigning for this uh, position, I did hear from my constituents that they would like to see term limits, which was Another another concern has been posed more than once now too that I 
is uh, worth mentioning, and that is that, well, what if, what if a warrior doesn't have anyone step forward to become uh, a, an owner? Well, so what? If that uh, ward goes unrepresented for a term, if the sky is not going to fall, but it may inspire people to write. There would be an acquaintance that the sky would not fall because there were not someone elected to that position. I don't know, I mean, this microphone has to be, but uh, I kind of see what, where Greg's going with this thing. I, for, for, for city, city council, we have to decide what we're going to call this, okay? That, uh, I don't mind people running for two terms, eight, and then taking the time off and trying to reestablish themselves. To me, that's good competition, and it keeps a fresh mind in, say, that's somebody new. I mean, uh, if, if you look around, a lot of times, uh, the same old ideas are tried and tried again, and they fail, but they're going to try it again. So, and it, of course, ultimately fails, but it's the same thing. If we have a little bit of fresh air involved in, in the system, uh, I can see that. And all of us here ran campaigns, uh, you know, we're, we're non-paid elected officials, we're going to have to run again. We set term limits for ourselves, I would imagine, too. Uh, because the Charter Commission, if it's accepted by the public, will have to continue on. So if those that don't want to run at the next term, if I'm not, if I'm quite correct in that? No. no. Once it's done, it's done. Okay, so uh, to make it short, I guess I would say that I am for term limits with the break and then run again. The eight year, like Greg was saying, with Lee Summit, I kind of like that myself. Well, you know, and I, and I sympathize with this more to a degree. I, you know, first off, I think the federal government is in desperately need of terms. More than the state of Missouri, or poor little 30,000 uh, people population rate town, but you can have breaths of fresh air. You know, there's, there's no term limits right now, and I do recall you know, Three new aldermen elected in 2013. I think there was a nice little breath of fresh air right there, if I do say so myself, but maybe I'm a little biased. But um, I think term limits, at least in the local level, and I mentioned this last time, first off, I think it circumvents the will of the people. If the will of the people is to elect this individual for a third term, you know, but he's term limited out, guess what? They're going to go with maybe what we don't know. We, maybe it is, maybe we don't. Uh, the second best choice they wish they had represent them. I think it's about who people wish to have represent them. If they want this guy, then they're going to want to get this guy. Why should we limit the choice of voters? That's my problem with this whole process. Secondly, I completely disagree that there is a massive incumbency advantage. Maybe at the federal government, maybe at the state government, there's not a ton of special interest money thrown in there. And I've said this, I'm not saying there's not an incumbency advantage, because there is. You know, I mean, I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but I do, you know, I, I study political science, I know, I, you know, I know all about this stuff. There is an incumbency advantage with every election. But I'm telling you, it's not like the state of Missouri, it's not like the federal government. You know, if there was such a great incumbency advantage, and there's no reason I should be on the board of Walton right now. I'm sorry, there's none. Or my brother. Well, I guess the situation's different, but you, for sure. So the point I'm getting at is, one, I think you're limiting choice of voters, which I have a huge problem with. You know, not to digress, but I'm, I'm all about elections. I'm all about electing the, the marshal, the judge, I, anything that provides voter choice. That is why I ran for the Charter Commission, to provide voter choice. Secondly, Sandy brought up an excellent point. If later on we have initiative and recall in this election, in this charter, there is so many voter outlets for voters to vent their frustration other than tournaments. And that's what I ran for on this, to create voter empowerment. If we can provide uh, options to empower voters, to make this city be theirs, to be more theirs, more ownership, then great, that's what I want. That's the goal of this. But when you set tournaments, you're limiting choice, and that's a huge problem. So, I, I mentioned that, but then again, one more thing. <clears throat> if we had term limits in place, depending on what those term limits are, Ward 5 may have had to have an appointed alderman this year, because that individual ran unopposed. 
And he's not the only time that I've seen it happen in Raytown in the past, in the, within recent history. So these are all points of consideration. I, I get the idea of terminals. I'm not speaking that it's an awful idea, but I think in a town of 30,000, I don't really feel that, that this is the need for it. And you know, when I walked in campaign, nobody brought up to me terminals, terminals, terminals. That wasn't the case at all. I mean, and of course, you know, I was saying a couple things that I agree on, and I didn't bring up terminals myself. So, you know, I think it depends on who the messenger is in many respects. But, you know, I, I just think that that why circumvent the will of the people? If they want to elect candidate A for a third term, but you're saying no, because this wise charter commission is going to eliminate that good candidate from office. That's not what I'm that's not what I feel like I was elected to do on this commission. And I'm not gonna support anything that, that, that does that. So anyway. Chris White, 
because she went out and locked doors. She went out and talked to people. Greg Walters, after 20 some years, was defeated by a young man that got out and knocked on doors and talked to people. So, you know, that was the people's decision. There's some assumptions I think that are false here. Um, Jason, you said a lot about Yeah, I know. Okay, and I, they can't go without being responded to. Um, the will of the people, I'm all for the will of the people, and I said put it to the will of the people and let them choose. I have no doubt in my mind if you put this as a full out issue that it will pass, and I don't think there's a person up here that doubts that. And I say this basically, but I cannot think of a city, state, or county where they have put term limits on the ballot when the voters said, no, we don't want them. In most cases around here, it has been situations where the voters forced the issue and then put it on against city councils that did not want it to happen. So that's, that's I mean, that's the reality of the situation. And I don't think great town people are any different than the people that live in the summit in Kansas City or in the United States, Missouri. We talk about incumbents in Ward 5. The difference between what you were suggesting in Ward 5, somebody did run, an incumbent ran, and he was reelected. I can give you many cases of incumbents who ran unopposed. I cannot think, and I was up here for 27 years, I cannot think of one situation where there was an open seat that went without a candidate. There's a reason for that, because incumbents do have a name advantage. And they do have they do have the power of that, and you're well aware that you went to school on this. So I think that's important. It's not an event to circumvent the will of the people to do this. By allowing them to do it as a pullout issue, you're allowing the people to express their will on it. That is, and that's that's the fallacy. This is not an attempt to keep people from voting, it's an attempt to let people make the decision. Now, I ask that we carry this over and think about it more and some feedback from the public. I think that uh, we've got difference of opinions. I know more people who would rather have term limits than not. Obviously, Sandy knows more people who would rather have, would rather not have term limits. One of us is wrong and one of us is right. I'm willing to take the chances. Well, and I think we might all be in agreement that it might end up being a full out question. So we did start. I think we're talking about two issues. One is whether or not this commission believes we should have term limits, and then whether we have to pull out. And we're already 10 minutes past, and so we're really in two discussions right now. So I would recommend at least a point of order which is either vote to leave it like it is uh, and then adjourn, or uh, to continue to the end of both discussions. Carry uh, over like you did every other item. Yeah. Well, but I mean, if, if it ends up going to be a pull-out question, then I, I, I don't see an issue with voting to our to leave it like it is. To leave it like it is at this point, and then come back later. Come back later. Any other comments on that? Right. Go ahead and read it. I just, I just want to make it would make slightly more sense if the first two sentences were swapped. As in election and terms, aldermen shall be elected to serve four-year terms. Each ward shall have two aldermen on staggered election cycles. The term and order of elected alderman position shall keep in continuity with the previous structure and status prior to this chart. So okay with everybody? Um, I'll be carrying this one. Well, I'll say that the portion of it being a full time question, yes. As we are carrying over the preamble. The preamble is going to be full out of place. No, no, no. I mean, no. we are carrying over the discussion of the preamble. Yes, yes we are carrying over the discussion of the preamble. Yes, we are. We're going to see what's going on here. But, okay. I think that's all. Is, is there... Yeah, see, this yeah. Not, I guess my recommendation would be is that when we're done writing the charter, that we go back to food and decide which items we should be pulled out and do it all at once. <coughs> We'll give it its time next. Right. Any other discussion? Can I have a show of hands that's in favor of the way Lisa just read it? And then further discussion later on whether or not it is a full out question for her time on this. All in favor? All opposed? This one. Okay. All right, so at that, we're already 20 full minutes overdue. Uh, that completes section 3.2.
first begin with 3.3 compensation uh, next meeting, which is June 23rd.